Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Sano and Emily. And as you can see, we are very busy packing up the classroom to get ready for next year. So, since we are diligently packing and cleaning right now, I asked one of my friends to help with today's reading workshop lesson. Good eye, mites. Can you see me? I know I look a lot like seaweed, but I'm actually a leafy sea dragon. My name's Dave, and I live off the coast of Australia. We love it here because there are lots of seaweed beds for us to live in. Leafy sea dragons love seaweed beds because we hang on to the seaweed with our tails, so we are camouflaged from predators that want to eat us. Did any of you pick me for your sea life report? If you did, I'll bet you used a lot of adjectives in your report. Oi, Mrs. Sano, can you tell the students a little bit more about adjectives? Sure, Dave. I'd be happy to. An adjective describes a noun and tells you more about it. For example, an adjective could describe how a noun looks, like a cute, cuddly puppy, or a strange gray fish, or even a big red boat. It can describe how a noun smells, like the sweet smell of a rose, or the yucky, stinky smell of a shoe. An adjective can also describe how a noun behaves or acts, like a super fast runner or a very slow snail. And an adjective can also describe how a noun feels, like a soft, huggable teddy bear or the spiky, sharp spines on a sea urchin. How could you use adjectives to describe Dave? You could say he's green, leafy, friendly, and very smart. Those are all great adjectives. I'm sure you could come up with a few more. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. Thanks, Mrs. Sano. I have a great story for you to read the students today. My dad used to read it to all of us baby sea dragons when we were in his belly. It's all about a little seahorse who learns a very important lesson. Listen carefully and see if you can find any adjectives in the story. Sully the Seahorse, written by Natalie Pritchard, illustrated by Natalie Murheb. Sully the Seahorse down in the depths below shimmering tides lived a young seahorse who wanted to hide. Sully was so very tiny and small, he didn't feel very special at all. Oh, how he longed to be good at one thing. Sully just wished to be fast or to sing. Days were quite tough for this little seahorse at school. He was known as a loser. Yes, sea life was cruel. The day had arrived that Sully so feared. The others loved it and thought he was weird. What could be happening? Just what might it be? Waves of excitement whooshed fast through the sea. Daisy the dolphin was humming a note. Pufferfish Pete was fine-tuning his bloat. Practicing dancing moves and tuning guitars, it was the annual games called Sea School Stars. The contest starts soon, reminded Miss Trout. Sully felt worried and started to shout. Do I have to take part, Miss? Please say no. Yes, she replied. You should give it a go. Went the horn. Can you please get in place? Miss Trout said. Time for the swimmer's big race. Sully cried, No, I'm going to lose. 
Daisy just laughed and looked very amused. On your marks, ready, get set, go! Sully set off, but he was moving so slow. Susie the swordfish shot into the lead, but ouch! Her long bill got caught in seaweed. Wilbur the whale was the first past the post. Ha! I'm the winner! He started to boast. Sully so wished to be swift like the whales, with big white flippers and super strong tails. I'm not special. I'm just not that fast. And yes, you guessed it. Poor Sully came last. Daisy, of course, won the singing cup match. Her notes were so piercing, some turtle eggs hatched. Ollie was crowned Magician of the Year. Sully wished he could make shells disappear. Then it was time for the dancing contest. Miss Trout said, Please, can you just do your best? Sully decided to give it a try. He took a deep breath and tried not to cry. On your marks, ready, get set, go! Sully was dancing, but he had no flow. Just then, a huge shadow cast a dark cloud over the stage on the dancers and crowd. Poised up above was a boat hunting prey, hoping to grapple a catch of the day. Splash went the diver deep down into the sea, aiming to catch a young seahorse or three. These tiny creatures are wanted as pets, Watch out, little Sully. Here comes the net. Closer and closer, the diver did swim, heading for Sully, whose chances were slim. Then something quite simply stunning took place, better than singing or winning a race. Sully changed color before their shocked eyes. Swordfish and dolphin just stared in surprise. On your marks, ready, get set, go! But this time Sully wasn't so slow. As quick as a flash, his armor changed shade. He started to blend with the background and fade. Sully had camouflaged and turned a pale green. He hid in sea reeds and couldn't be seen. The diver gave up. He paddled away, back to the boat with no catch for the day. Sully came out when it was safe and clear. All the sea creatures let out a big cheer. He took center stage. They looked on in awe. Master of camouflage. Encore! Encore! Changing from greens to be like the sea reeds to sparkling bright blues as deep as the seas. For the very first time, Sully felt proud. Seahorses are special. He laughed out loud. From that day on, he no longer did wish to be a huge whale or a super fast fish. Sully was special. He wasn't so weak. Plus, he never lost at hide and seek. Please don't think you should win all the time. Just give your best and you'll sparkle and shine. We're all special in our own unique way. Believe in yourself. 
you will be okay. Don't be afraid to stand out from the crowd. You are amazing. Stand tall and be proud. On your marks, ready, get set, go! Did you like the story, mates? Did you hear any adjectives? In the story, I heard they use adjectives like tiny and small, and then happy and proud to describe Sully the seahorse. They also use adjectives like huge, strong, and fast to describe Wilbur the whale. Did you hear any others? Outstanding work, mites, but before you go, I made three different non-fiction stories for you to read all about seahorses. I want you to pick the one that's just right for you. Then, practice reading it. When you're done, go back and read it again. Then, go and underline all the adjectives in the story. Cheers! Hope to see you when you visit the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Later! Thank you so much for your help today, Dave. Emily and I are still working hard to pack up the classroom, but I know the students will love your just right stories. So, boys and girls, remember, when you're reading to yourself or with a partner, think about the adjectives and how they tell you more about the noun. We'll see you soon. Bye!